What's up, insiders? Deuces Jack. I'm at vapinginsider.com, and today we're going to do something a little different, all right? I have to make this video. I had to make it. When I got back from ECC, I saw all the negative coverage about vaping on every news channel every night since I got back, and it's really been annoying the hell out of me. Now, most of you don't know. I'm a bit of a political junkie, okay? Probably the thing I like just as much as vaping is politics. So I watch all the channels. I watch CNN, I watch MSNBC, I watch Fox News. I watch them all because I like to get all the different perspectives. Now I've said it in other videos, okay? 40 years ago, a journalist was a journalist. They followed the story, they asked the hard questions, they investigated. There's no such thing as that anymore. There is no such thing as journalism in America anymore. It is officially dead. The fact that these so-called experts are not able to clarify the difference and they're conflating vaping drugs with vaping legitimate juices like you and I vape is just absolutely despicable. So in order to clear things up a little bit, I want to go over some of the top myths in vaping. Myth number one, you hear people say it all the time, vaping is just as bad as smoking. No, not even close. In fact, in 2015, the Royal College of Physicians over in the United Kingdom did a very comprehensive study on vaping, and they found that vaping is actually 95% safer than smoking. This is the same Royal College of Physicians that were the first people to blow the whistle on smoking in the late 60s that nobody listened to. I hate to say it, but I'm gonna take the word of this organization over the unelected bureaucrats that we have in the CDC and the FDA. Sorry, I just don't trust any of those political appointees as far as I can throw them. Myth number two, secondhand vape is very dangerous. Again, that's just a bold faced lie. And we actually have studies here to prove that. Multiple states have done multiple studies in multiple vape shops where they put air quality machinery in a vape shop to measure the air quality where guys are blowing massive clouds. Their conclusion was there are no unsafe toxins in the air of a vape shop. In fact, in some of the cases, the air inside the vape shop was actually cleaner than the air outside. Myth number three, vaping is more addictive than smoking. I'm gonna answer this one from my personal experience, okay? I was a smoker. I was smoking anywhere from three to five packs a day. When I started vaping, I started at 24 milligrams of nicotine. The juice I was buying had 24 milligrams of nicotine in it. Within three months, I was down to six milligrams of nicotine. I was able to wean myself off of nicotine within 90 days. Three months after I got down to six milligrams of nicotine, I was down to three milligrams of nicotine. Now. I vape at 1.5 milligrams of nicotine, and to be honest with you, if I wanted to, I could probably go to zero without a problem. So I know for a fact that the vaping that we do is not more addictive than smoking. Now what a lot of people fail to realize, they always want to make nicotine the big bad boy in the room, right? Nicotine in itself is no more addictive than caffeine. That's a fact, that's an undisputed fact. Scientists agree on that. What makes smoking cigarettes so addictive is the other 4,000 chemicals that they put in there with the tobacco and nicotine. When you're vaping, you don't have those chemicals in your vape, and that's why you're able to wean yourself off nicotine quite easily, in fact. The next myth is, E-cigarettes encourage young people to smoke. It's a gateway to smoking. This one always cracks me up because the numbers just don't jive. If vaping is so popular among teens and it's a gateway to smoking, why isn't teen smoking going up? It's an absolute lie. It's a lie that Big Pharma wants you to believe. It's a lie that Big Tobacco wants you to believe. And the reason they want you to believe it is because they're losing money to vaping. They're losing millions and millions of dollars. 
There is no real comprehensive study that shows that vaping is a gateway to smoking to teens. That is an absolute fallacy. Another common myth you hear a lot is, vaping is gonna give you popcorn lung. Let me explain to you what popcorn lung is, okay? There are a bunch of workers that worked in a popcorn factory, and there's a chemical called diacetyl that would give the popcorn its buttery flavor. Some of the workers that worked in this factory were inhaling huge amounts of this chemical called diacetyl. Physicians believe that this chemical compound is what is responsible for some of those workers coming down with something called popcorn lung. That's where it got its name from because they worked in a popcorn factory. A few years ago, it was found out that a couple of e-juices had traces of diacetyl in it. Something like nine micrograms, 10 micrograms. It wasn't a lot, but it was used in some of the flavorings, especially some of the buttery flavorings in some vape juices. Today, most responsible e-juice companies have stopped using any ingredients with diacetyl in it. In fact, I'd say you'd be hard pressed to find an e-juice on the market right now that actually has diacetyl in it. Conversely, the average cigarette has 6,718 micrograms of diacetyl in it, as opposed to nine micrograms in a vape juice, if you're able to find a vape juice with diacetyl in it. Now, we've been studying smoking for over 50 years now, okay? And so far, not one smoker ever has come down with popcorn lung, and they're putting 750 times more diacetyl in their lungs than a vapor would if you could even find a juice with diacetyl in it. The only conclusion is no one vaping is going to come down with popcorn lung. It's just not going to happen. The numbers just don't add up. But you have all these fear mongers out there saying that you're going to get popcorn lung from vaping. Meanwhile, there's never, ever been a case of anybody getting popcorn lung from vaping. I've been vaping for seven years myself, okay? And this nonsense has only started to come out in the last year or so. Here's the one all the newspapers like to print. Your e-cigarette can explode on you. No, your e-cigarette will not explode on you if you take proper care of it, okay? Most of the times when you see one of those fires in somebody's pocket, somebody in a deli on the news, and you see flames shooting out of their pocket, it's because that moron actually took a battery and put it in his pocket loose. And it probably hit some keys and a coin and it made the battery explode. That's not the safe way to carry batteries. Any vapor, any vaping store, any vape reviewer will always tell you if you're gonna carry separate batteries, make sure you carry them in a case. A case costs like a quarter, okay? So that's one way it explodes. Another way you might see a vape explode is when unscrupulous vape stores sell a new vapor, a very advanced mod. Most of the times this will happen with what we refer to as a mech mod. A mech mod is basically just an encasement for the battery. There is no regulation to your coil. Okay, you hit the button and it gives you all the juice it can to the coil in order for you to get the warmest type of vape, the hottest type of vape, the biggest clouds. Unfortunately, sometimes newbies get their hands on something like this, they don't know what they're doing, and they wind up putting a build in there or a coil in there where the ohms are too low for the battery and it overheats the battery and explodes. Again, most of the time, the person with that type of mod that gets into a bad situation probably didn't have any business owning that type of mod. So the only time you see things explode is from poor battery safety and user error. That's it, man. In fact, some of the more advanced stuff on the market, the, the mods with screens and power buttons and stuff, these mods have all kinds of safeties built in and you'll rarely see anything go wrong with those types of mods. Another myth you hear is, you're still smoking if you vape, you're just replacing one habit for another. No genius, that is not the way it works, okay? When I smoke something, I'm taking a lighter, I'm lighting it up, it's combustible, I'm actually inhaling what the burning 
tobacco is producing. When I vape, I have a coil that gets heated up through a battery. Running through that coil is normally a cotton wick. The cotton wick is taking my e-juice, pulling it up like a wick into the coil. When that coil heats up, it's vaporizing the juice. There is no burning whatsoever. In fact, if you've ever walked through a vape cloud, you'll notice that you're not gonna cough when you walk through one. You just won't. You could inhale that whole cloud that you're walking through and you are not going to cough. Conversely, if you walk through a smoker's cloud, a smoker's smoke, and inhale it, you're probably gonna cough and it's gonna smell very nasty. You're not gonna be walking through a cloud that smells like strawberry custard, that's for sure. So no, vaping is not smoking because there is no combustion happening. What you're inhaling is vaporized e-liquid. Nothing is burning. I've been watching some of these vape companies and they're marketing towards kids. That is one of the biggest lies I've ever seen, okay? Not only is it a lie, but we as a community, as vapors, have actually helped them with this lie because we started going after our own and going after companies that are actually, you know, making you know, candy flavors, cookie flavors. You know, we had people that were going after them and saying that label is child appealing. When that first started happening, I thought that was a big mistake. And I'll tell you why I still think it's a big mistake. Because this is a free market country built on free market capitalism. If a company wants to make a label, unless you're an investor in that company, you got no business telling that company what they can put on their label at all. As far as the marketing to children thing goes, listen, parents need to start parenting, okay? Just because something looks good to a child doesn't necessarily mean that company is marketing towards a child. It's a ridiculous premise, okay? Parents are responsible for the actions of their children. They need to get on the stick and start parenting. That's the bottom line, okay? What do we all have to give up whatever we like because a, a child might find it appealing? I got news for all of you out there, okay? Most kids want to grow up too fast. Most kids want to do things that are appealing to adults as well because they want to feel like they're grown up and mature. For crying out loud, man, a couple of months ago, these same kids were eating Tide Pods. Are we going to stop banning uh, laundry detergent? It's an absolutely ridiculous premise that has no business in a legitimate discussion about vaping. And if you want to tell me that candy flavors, Oreo flavors, you know, cookie flavors, custard flavors, that those are appealing to children, well then I must be a child because that's all I vape right now. All I vape are vanilla custards and candy flavors. You know why? Because I like them too, because I was a child once as well. And the last myth, the biggest myth, the one that you're seeing all over the news now is, hey man, you better stop doing that. People are dying from that. When I'm vaping out on the street, I must get this four or five times a week while I'm, you know, commuting to my job and stuff like that. It's the most ridiculous statement I've ever heard. And it just goes to show you that most Americans are actually sheep. They're just headline reading sheep. They don't do any research. They don't look into things. It's actually kind of sad how easy it is to create a narrative in this country. The reason people think people are dying from vaping is because these kids are going out and they're buying black market THC cartridges, cannabis cartridges, okay? And basically who they're buying this from, they're buying this from a drug dealer. They're not buying this from a legitimate vape shop, okay? They're just not. And in some cases, there are actually phony jewel pods going around that are making people sick as well. If you wanna combat that part of the equation, I would suggest that if you're jeweling, only buy pods from Juul and then you don't have anything to worry about. But as far as these kids buying these black market THC cartridges, it's the same thing as a crackhead buying a vial of crack from a drug dealer on the street. And they just don't want to admit it to their parents, so they told their parents they were vaping. And their parents are so stupid, they're so uninvolved in their kids' lives that they don't know the difference. And the media and these doctors on the news have been conflating the two. Let me explain to you the difference. When I buy e-juice with nicotine in it, 
I'm buying it from a legitimate company that actually has a medical grade clean room that they're making my juice in. That's who I'm buying it from. When you go on the street and you buy one of these black market THC cartridges from a drug dealer, I can guarantee you that drug dealer didn't take the time or money to invest in a clean room. I can guarantee you that. I don't even want to know the conditions that they're filling these liquid cartridges in. It is probably absolutely disgusting. And God knows what else is going into that juice besides the stuff that's actually hurting people. And this is my main problem with the media. The news is taking these black market THC cartridges and they're putting them on the same level as the e-juice that I'm buying from a legitimate company with a clean room. It's absolutely ridiculous. They're two different things, two totally different things. One's a drug user, one's a vapor, plain and simple. Now, some people are probably watching this video and they're like, who is this guy? What's he talking about? You know, he's, he's like a conspiracy theorist. Let me tell you, there's no conspiracy here, okay? The fact of the matter is big tobacco, big pharmaceutical, and your elected government officials want to kill vaping. They want to kill it. And the media is their willing partner going along with it. Now you're probably saying to me, but deuces, why do they want to kill vaping if it's getting so many people off of smoking? That's exactly why. Let me explain. In 1998, all the states got together. They sued the tobacco companies. And they came up with the Tobacco Master Settlement Plan. Basically, what all the states said was, we're okay with you giving our citizens cancer, but you got to pay us for that cancer. Because we know cigarettes give people cancer. That's a fact. There's no de denying that. And the payments to each state were going to be based on the prior year's sale of tobacco in that state. Now, <laughs> of course, these greedy politicians, they couldn't wait for that money. Nah, nah. They, weren't, they just weren't going to take a check from the tobacco companies, okay? They wanted that money up front. So what did they do? All these states went out and they issued tobacco bonds. They basically borrowed money from bond buyers, okay, based on the projected future sales of tobacco in their state. Along comes vaping, tobacco sales go down, the state's already collected the money from the bondholders, now they're paying interest on bonds that they can't pay the principal back on. Or if they can pay the principal back, they got to get it from somewhere else because they don't want to default on the bonds. And they're pissed off about it. They're like, how come we're taking money from here to pay off these bonds? Why isn't the tobacco sales paying for these bonds? The obvious answer is vaping came in and threw a monkey wrench in the whole works. So all these politicians are annoyed at hell at vaping. They can't stand it because it's messing with their money. And that's the bottom line on that. That's why you're seeing the politicians come out against it. That's why you're seeing Big Pharma come out against it. That's why you're seeing Big Tobacco come out against it. And the mainstream media is complicit in helping them destroy vaping. Now, as far as vaping goes, I can speak from personal experience. When I started vaping, I, right away I was breathing easier, I felt like my circulation was better, I had more energy, I definitely lost weight because now instead of eating sweet stuff, I could vape on it if I wanted to. I'm able to climb steps without getting out of breath, I can climb a flight of steps, I can, I can climb six flights of steps now without getting out of breath. When I was smoking, I couldn't do that. I can play basketball with my kids now. I couldn't do that for more than 10 minutes when I was smoking. I don't get up in the morning and cough half my lungs up anymore, okay? In the middle of the night, my sleep apnea has totally gone away. I used to, any of you ever had sleep apnea? It's the scariest thing the first time it happens. Basically, your throat closes while you're sleeping. I used to wake up gasping for air when I was a smoker. It doesn't happen anymore since I started vaping. And another really cool benefit to vaping is I've met some of the best people in this industry that I've ever met in my life. The other people I want to make a plea to are the networks and these so-called experts, these doctors that are getting on 
camera and spewing all this misinformation. Because of these experts, I'm actually hearing stories of people quitting vaping and actually going back to smoking. And to me, that is absolutely disgusting. And these so-called experts are actually gonna have some blood on their hands, okay? Because if these people are picking up cigarettes again and, it, and instead of vaping, that's an absolute disservice to all of the people out there that are watching those networks. It's disgusting and it needs to be spoken about and it needs to be handled. So what I would hope some of you do is, when you get into a discussion with somebody about vaping, right, and you're disagreeing about it and they're telling you that it's worse than smoking, do the industry a favor. Take a video like this, it doesn't have to be my video, but share it with them so they can at least get the facts. I'm gonna tell you a quick little story, all right? I've been working on this video for a couple of days, insiders. I had my plans to release it on September 12th. September 11th, President Trump got on the television with his proposed flavor ban. Now, being a New Yorker, I was right away suspicious when they rolled this out on September 11th. I just think it was a way for them to get this out there without getting the negative feedback that they were probably going to get because of all the 9-11 coverage and the 18 years of history of it. I just think it was a bad job if you were gonna roll out anything to roll it out on 9-11. On just didn't make any sense right away as a New Yorker. I was automatically suspicious. It doesn't shock me that leaders in our government would actually do something as underhanded as that. What does shock me is the misinformation that I believe the president's been given from the highest levels in our government. I honestly do believe that most of these unelected bureaucrats have no clue whatsoever how many people they're going to be putting out of business how many people are going to lose their jobs. I don't think they have any clue, and I don't think they care, to be honest with you. The good news is, if you gotta garner any good news from this, is that this president isn't a typical politician. Whether you like him or not, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, it, it, means, it, it means nothing, it really doesn't. The fact of the matter is, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, you should be absolutely appalled by them trying to take away your individual freedoms and liberties via this flavor ban. Now, like I said, the good news is this president likes to tweet. I mean, his most respected advisors can't get that phone out of his hand. He insists on tweeting. And he likes to tweet because he feels like it puts him in touch with the American public. Well, that sword cuts both ways. He may, he may love to tweet, right? But that means when he's tweeting, He's actually looking at some of the responses as well. So my advice to you would be get on social media, get on Twitter, and tweet at this president. It's not like he's one of those hardline guys who hasn't changed his mind before when new information has come to light. He's not the type of guy that won't come back and say, hey, I didn't have all the information. Now that I got some things straight, now that I see where the public is, you know, we might not want to do this. I do ask you this. When you do tweet at him, tweet at him respectfully. Give him the respect that that office deserves. So now you're probably saying, but deuces, what else can we do? I'd say there's quite a few things we as vapors and Americans can do. First of all, I would start by calling my local state legislators. Find out who they are, Google them, and call them up. Find out who your senators are, call your two senators. Find out who your congressperson is, call them. When you speak to any of these lawmakers, please be respectful but stern. Explain to them that you vape, you vote, and this is a standalone issue for you. It's key that you use those words. Tell them it's a standalone issue for you. You will not vote for anybody that is against vaping. Because unfortunately, the only time these politicians seem to actually act is when you threaten their power structure. And the only way to threaten their power structure is to tell them that you are going to vote them out of office. That's the only thing that gets these guys moving. I would also encourage you to call the White House. The number for comments is 202-456-1111. You can leave comments 
at that number from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. If you want to talk to the switchboard, the number is 202-456-1414. And again, if you do wind up speaking to a person, make sure you're respectful. We want to make sure we portray vaping in a positive light. So in closing, insiders, I just want to say, listen, we're all Americans, okay? This is the country of life, liberty, and freedom. Our founding fathers built this great country upon those principles. And even if you're not a vapor, the fact that this government is constantly chipping away at our individual liberties and freedoms should get you angry. It really should, because it's happening every day. They're taking it away by little, little pieces, and they're just chipping away at us. And it's time for the American people to stand up and say, listen, we don't want this anymore. We want limited government. We want limited regulation. And we don't want the government involved in our lives. These are the big boy rules, okay? We can all take care of ourselves. We can all make decisions for ourselves. We don't need a government to do that for us. Sorry if this video was a little long-winded. It's just something I'm very passionate about. It's something I feel like I had to get out there because every time I'm sitting in my living room watching the news, I'm going crazy when I see these people coming on and lying to the American public about vaping. I know for a fact vaping has made my life better when compared to when I was smoking. So that's it, insiders. That's all I got for you today. I'm getting down off the soapbox. Now more than ever, it's more important than ever that you keep living that vape life. We're out. Deuces.